I have said it before, and I will say it again. A wizard is never late, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. But what exactly do I mean by when he means to? Is it at a specific moment, at a specific time? But then, what is time? As I sit here in the Shire, my mind wanders through the vast expanse of time. I find myself lost in deep contemplation, pondering the mysteries of the ages and the secrets of the universe. And so, dear friends, let us embark on a journey together, one that will take us beyond the limits of our present understanding and into the very heart of the nature of time itself. For what is time but a measure of the passing of days and years, of the cycles of the sun and the moon, and of the seasons that mark the passing of the years? And yet time is so much more than that. It is a force that shapes the very fabric of the world, a force that brings forth life and decay, and that guides the fates of all living things. As we set out on our journey, let us seek to unravel the mysteries of time, to understand its power and its influence on all that exists. Let us explore the ways in which it shapes our lives and our destinies, and let us discover the hidden forces that drive its inexorable passage. For it is only through exploring the depths of our understanding that we can hope to unlock the secrets of the ages and find our place in the grand tapestry of time. So let us set forth with hearts full of wonder and minds open to all that the journey may reveal. In the beginning, the concept of time was shrouded in mystery, a force that flowed like a great river, shaping the world around us. The earliest mortals knew little of its true nature, and it was a source of endless fascination and speculation. The great philosophers of ancient times sought to understand the nature of time, and their debates echoed down through the ages. Some argued that time was a quality or property of objects, while others proposed that it was a separate dimension distinct from space. As the centuries passed, our understanding of time grew and evolved. The great scientists and philosophers of the world sought to measure and quantify its passage, to understand its role in the universe. At its core, Time is a way of measuring the duration of events, or the intervals between them. We might say that it takes an hour to complete a task, or that there are 24 hours in a day. Yet time is more than just a measure of duration. It is also closely tied to the concept of change. As time passes, the world around us is constantly evolving and changing, whether it be the passing of the seasons, the growth of a plant, or the aging of a person. The study of time has been approached in different ways by the two main disciplines of science and philosophy. While scientists have focused on empirical measurement and theoretical models in their study of time, philosophers have tended to delve into the abstract and conceptual aspects of the concept. From the ancient philosophers who grappled with the concept of eternity, to the modern physicists who seek to unravel the mysteries of time's arrow, and the concept of the present moment. The study of time has always been a subject of enduring fascination and contemplation. This video series will explore the multifaceted nature of time and its role in our lives, delving into the various ways it has been understood and studied throughout history by these different disciplines. We begin our scientific journey with Galileo Galilei a towering figure in the history of science and a key player in the scientific revolution. Galileo was a skilled physicist, mathematician, astronomer and philosopher, and his contributions to these fields are numerous and varied, but among his many achievements, one that stands out for us today is his theory of time. In the early 17th century, the dominant view of time was that it was a quality or property of objects rather than a measure of change or duration. According to this view, time was seen as a way of classifying events or objects according to their temporality or their relative position in a fixed eternal order. But Galileo challenged this view, 
arguing that time was a measurable quantity that could be objectively observed and quantified. He supported this view with numerous experiments and observations, including his famous experiments with falling bodies and pendulums. One of Galileo's key insights was that time could be measured using a consistent, repeatable reference point, such as the oscillations of a pendulum or the vibrations of a tuning fork. He also demonstrated that the time it takes for an object to fall a certain distance is independent of its mass, a concept that is now known as the law of falling bodies. Galileo's theory of time had important implications for his work on the laws of motion as well. Next, we have Sir Isaac Newton, an English mathematician and physicist who is considered one of the most influential scientists in history. His work on the laws of motion and the development of calculus laid the foundation for much of modern physics and mathematics. One of Newton's most significant contributions to science was his theory of time, which was a major advancement in the understanding of this fundamental concept. While Galileo Galilei was one of the first to challenge the conventional view that time was a quality or property of objects rather than a measure of change or duration, it was Newton who provided a more detailed and comprehensive theory of time based on the laws of motion. According to Newton's theory, time was an absolute quantity that was independent of the position or motion of an observer. He argued that time flowed uniformly and at a constant rate, regardless of the presence of matter or energy. This was a revolutionary concept that challenged traditional views of time as being linked to the cycles of celestial bodies or the movement of the Earth. Newton's theory of time was closely tied to his laws of motion, which described the way in which objects move and change velocity. He argued that the laws of motion could be described using mathematical equations and that these equations could be used to predict the future positions and velocities of moving objects. This was a major departure from the Aristotelian view, which held that the natural state of objects was rest and that they required a continuous force to keep them moving. He compared time to an arrow shot from a bow imagining it to move in a straight line and never veering off course. For Newton, a second on Earth was equal to a second on Mars, Jupiter, or somewhere in outer space. He held that nothing in the universe had a constant pace, not even light, and that absolute motion could not be observed. He concluded, therefore, that time must be constant if the speed of light could fluctuate it is simple to believe that this is the case. There are roughly 24 hours in each day. There isn't a day with 25 and another with 22. But then came along a wizard you have all heard of, a name synonymous with genius, Albert Einstein. In 1905, he unveiled his special theory of relativity, and 10 years later, he presented his general theory of relativity, both of which transformed our understanding of time, space, and gravity. In these theories, Einstein proposed that the speed of light is constant and finite for all observers, and that space and time are not absolute, but instead they are relative to the observer's position and motion. This has led to a number of implications that are still being explored and developed today. Before Einstein, it was generally accepted that space and time were separate, independent entities that were not affected by the presence of matter or energy. This view was supported by Newton's laws of motion, which described the way in which objects moved and changed velocity in an absolute, unchanging framework of space and time. But Einstein challenged this view arguing that space and time were not independent entities, but rather were part of a single interconnected fabric known as space-time. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, the presence of matter and energy can distort and bend space-time, causing it to curve and stretch. This phenomenon is most noticeable near massive objects, such as stars and planets, 
where the curvature of space-time is significant. The effects of this curvature can be observed in the way that light travels through space-time and the way that time appears to flow differently for observers moving at different speeds. One of the most dramatic examples of this effect called time dilation can be observed when an object is traveling at speeds close to the speed of light. At such high speeds, the curvature of space-time becomes so pronounced that time appears to flow much slower for the moving observer compared to an observer at rest. Einstein's theory of relativity has had a profound impact on our understanding of time and the nature of the universe. It has been confirmed by numerous experiments and observations, and it forms the basis for much of modern physics. It has also had important practical applications, such as in the development of GPS technology and in the study of black holes. For over a hundred years, this space-time model has remained dominant, crushing all challenges to its throne. The discovery of gravitational waves in 2015, a prediction of Einstein's theory of relativity, seemed to have further strengthened its position. However, like many scientific theories before it, it would be imprudent to assume we have a final theory that explains time, especially when it's incompatible with quantum mechanics, a fundamental theory in physics that describes the physical properties of nature at the atomic and subatomic level. One of the key differences between the way time is treated in quantum mechanics and general relativity is that in quantum mechanics, time is treated as a parameter that can be varied in the equations of the theory while in general, relativity time is an integral part of the space-time model. This difference has led to some difficulties in reconciling the two theories, and one of the main challenges in modern physics is to find a way to merge these two approaches into a single theory that can explain all known physical phenomena. And thus, we come to the end of this first part of our time series. We have only just begun to delve into the vast and complex history of our understanding of time, highlighting some of the most important scientific moments in this journey. There are, of course, countless other scientists and their invaluable contributions that we have not yet mentioned for the sake of brevity, nor have we delved into the technicalities of the theories discussed or their various thought-provoking implications for other fundamental questions in cosmology. However, we hope to have the opportunity to return to them at a later date. You might be justified in wondering, well, what does this history of time from a scientific perspective tell me about what time is? Who was correct, Newton or Einstein, only if it was that simple? So far, Einstein's theories have been confirmed by more than a century of experiments, starting with one involving a solar eclipse in which the path of light from distant stars was shifted by the sun's intense gravitation by just the amount Einstein had predicted. His general theory of relativity is arguably the most successful theory of all time. It explains everything from GPS signals to gravitational redshift, from gravitational lensing to merging black holes, and from the timing of pulses to the orbit of Mercury. However, we also know that, that at some point in a black hole, Einstein's theory stops working. The curvature of space-time is so extreme that Einstein's general relativity fails. It is also incompatible with our theory of quantum mechanics. It seems that there is still a piece of the puzzle that we have yet to uncover, the full picture of our universe remaining shrouded in mystery. And so, it would be imprudent to draw any final conclusions about the nature of time at this point. But fear not, for our journey to understand the mysteries of time continues from a different perspective. In the next installment of this series, we will delve into the philosophical approach to time, examining the various viewpoints on time, such as presentism, eternalism, growing block theory, tenseless and tensed theories of time, the dynamic and the static theories of time, and also explore the experience of our own personal perception of time. Before we end this episode, we would like to share this wonderful quote from Stephen Hawking, 
a theoretical physicist and cosmologist best known for advancing theoretical models on black holes and cosmic inflation. Remember to look up at the stars and not down at your feet. Try to make sense of what you see and wonder about what makes the universe exist. Be curious. And however difficult life may seem, there is always something you can do and succeed at. It matters that you don't just give up. We hope you have enjoyed our very first episode of Gandalf Wonders. If you like what you see, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. It really does help us in producing more content like this. Also, do let us know what you think of time in the comments below. As we have mentioned before, time is a vast and complex subject, and we will return to it again soon in an effort to unravel its mysteries. Look to my coming on the first notification of your subscription. At dawn, look to Gandalf Wonders. Farewell and see you soon again, my friends.